What do RuneScape, World of Warcraft, and Team Fortress 2 all have in common? They all feature, in one way or another, trading. RuneScape allows players to trade items with each other, and gold coins function as a currency not only to buy from NPCs with, but also to pay other users for their items. And the Grand Exchange acts as a hub for this. Players can list their items on the Grand Exchange like it's RuneScape's very own eBay. So players don't even need to interact with each other to trade. World of Warcraft has a similar trading system, where players can meet up and trade their in-game items to each other. And Gold in WoW also functions as a currency for trade with other players. Team Fortress 2 also has a complex trading system, but instead of gold coins being the currency of choice, people use keys and refined metal as their way to put value to everything. Another Another thing that these three games have in common is that these currencies, these gold coins and keys, are worth real world money. People will spend their hard earned cash on these items, but they're not buying from the company that made their game, they're buying from other users. So you might be able to see where this is going. If people are willing to pay users for in-game goods and services, then that means there's money to be made from playing video games and using clever tricks to make a profit. In old school RuneScape, gold farmers are infamous. You'll very often find accounts that stay in certain areas of the world for 8 to 10 hours a day. They just sit and do the same thing over and over again. Whether it be killing a certain enemy or just mining a certain ore. And you can spot the gold farmers by looking at their XP levels. They'll barely have any levels in anything except the levels necessary for the task that they're doing. Like this gold farmer who has almost 45 million mining XP, which takes literally thousands of hours to reach. These players don't play the game for fun. They play the game as a job. And there's plenty of videos out there of people that have interviewed these gold farmers to ask them how they do it and how much money they make. Like this gold farm in Venezuela, five or six people sat here gold farming for hours a day and from their interview you learn that they make about one to two million gold an hour in the game. So how much is that worth in real money? What sort of hourly wage are we talking here? Well the value of the gold fluctuates daily but on average one million gold is worth 50 cents. 50 cents. Gold farming in RuneScape, which is their full-time job, makes them 50 cents an hour. This is crazy, right? That's so far below minimum wage. So why would anyone work such long hours for such a small amount of money? Venezuela already has the world's highest inflation, and it looks like the economic crisis there is about to get even worse. The International Monetary Fund projects the country's inflation rate will rise to an incomprehensible 1 million percent. In the meantime, the IMF says Venezuela's inflation could hit 1.37 million percent. I don't know what the hell that means. It just sounds wow. scary. They are lines that seem to go on forever. Uno. All across Venezuela, hungry children waiting to receive a meal. Okay. The last two years have been devastating. A global pandemic threatening an already dire situation. With medicine, water, power and fuel shortages, the virus was not the only thing Venezuelans feared. It's what came as a result. Hunger. Venezuela's economy was heavily reliant on oil. Long story short, their economy was going great until there was a dramatic drop in the price of oil in 2015. Their government's solution to this problem was to borrow lots of money, then print lots of money to pay for that borrowed money. And this caused some of the worst hyperinflation that the world has ever seen, with their economy going into freefall and their currency being worth 54 million percent less than it was before the crash. So now, the average wage in Venezuela is between four to ten dollars. A month. A month. Being a Venezuelan gold farmer lets you make between four to ten dollars in a single day. So suddenly this tiny amount of money makes a whole lot more sense. So these Venezuelan bot farmers use the cheapest equipment that they can get their hands on and they grind for 10 to 12 hours a day and they make 30 times the amount that the average worker in their country makes. And that is still almost 10 times less than minimum wage in America. Team Fortress 2 has trading bots. There's this website called backpack.tf and it allows players to create listings of their items and people can buy or sell items through these trade listings in a semi-automated way. This skips the part where you have to find a player in-game to actually trade with, so the trading sites are extremely popular. So people set up bots that will use backpack.tf trade listings to buy items for slightly less than they sell them for over and over again 24 hours a day. And then eventually they trade all of their items in for keys and sell those keys 
keys for real world money. This is a whole lot less profitable than gold farming in RuneScape, however, because the rate at which you can get trades to happen is highly inconsistent. And there are also other sites, such as Scrap.tf, that have trading bots of their own. So those websites directly compete with any user-created trading bots that people have made. So only people who can facilitate setting up hundreds of trading bots at a time are really using these to make any money. But in-game economies actually aren't the only way that people make money from video games. ELO boosting is highly popular amongst very many games, because people who aren't good enough to hit a high rank are sometimes willing to spend money to cheat their way up the ladder. They pay a person to boost their account to high elo. And if you look on boosting sites for games like League of Legends, you can find profiles of boosters who are from Venezuela. And this can make you a whole lot more money than gold farming ever could. Boosting one League of Legends account from Silver 4 to Masters costs 680 euros. That's 718 US dollars. And boosting an account can take four or five days if you play enough games. Making that much money in five days is insane for someone living in a country like Venezuela. And boosts from, say, Silver to Plat make a lot less money, but they're also much faster to do. And something else League of Legends has is D-Boosters. A D-Booster is exactly what it sounds like. It's the opposite of a booster. Instead of getting an account to a higher rank, you're trying to get it to a lower rank. More specifically, D-Boosters take fresh accounts and try and get them into Iron 4 as fast as possible. Because Iron 4 accounts are actually pretty expensive, it is difficult to be in Iron 4. There are more people in Grandmaster and Challenger than there are in Iron 4. It's actually a skill to be this bad at the game. And smurfing in Iron 4 can be fun for a lot of skilled players, and a lot of players are willing to spend money on doing that. D-Boosters make roughly $5 an hour, playing on multiple PCs at a time trying to derank their accounts without getting themselves banned. There's money to be made from video games nowadays, and they actually create a significant lifeline for people in countries like Venezuela, where the wage of working a normal job isn't enough to buy yourself food. But as you can probably imagine, these players do have a negative impact on the games they make money off of. Games have the value of the currencies in their in-game economies completely tank because of how prevalent gold farming is. TF2 is currently having an inflation problem of its own with refined metal being practically worthless. And although this isn't directly caused by trading bots, it is accelerated by trading bots. And boosters and de-boosters ruin thousands of ranked games for real players that are just trying to enjoy the game in their free time. So there is a constant arms race between the developers developers of these games and the people trying to profit off of them, with very many accounts being banned for exploiting the game for monetary gain. And people hate gold farmers, and they hate boosters and win traders. There's no end of reddit threads and angry youtube videos talking about these things, and some of the stuff they say is pretty horrendous. But quite frankly it's hard to say I'm mad at any gold farmers or boosters that live in Venezuela. It's hard to say that I wouldn't do the same in their position, because funnily enough surviving day to day is a bit more important than some rich kid in America having a fun game of League of Legends. If you've got Got any examples of this sort of thing in other games that I didn't mention, please let me know. Because the most famous examples stand out from the crowd. But there's no end to the list of games that this could theoretically be done in. And I'm sure that these games aren't free of people just grinding trying to make a living. Thanks for watching.